Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. And today, part two in the ongoing saga of tuning your drum to the pitch of the shell. Back in episode 46, we did what could be described as a severely deep dive into this issue. Um, and we are very curious about the physics of sound and the physics of a drum in all possible ways and metrics. And it's worth stating that like, we're not trying to throw any particular drum companies under the bus with this stuff. We actually just want to know. That's it. And if there's something to this, if there isn't, and what the variables are when you're actually out in the real world and using your drums. And the variable that we kind of hit the brakes at last time was we stopped short of putting hoops and heads on because once you put heads on the drum and hit the side of it, you have the pitches of those heads to deal with in addition to whatever the shell is doing and it obscures everything. So also, we frankly weren't that sure of what was going to happen to all of this if we put heads on it. And we have come into possession of some Evans sound off heads, which are mesh and make no sound. They don't resonate. And they will still exert the pressure that we're looking for on the shell without obscuring the pitch of the wood itself. And of course, thanks so much to Promark by D'Addario for being our presenting sponsor and helping us do all of this. This is the same Tom from before. It is the Pearl Masters Custom Extra, which many of you have seen. And the only addition here really is just something for me to hold on to to hang it from so I don't have to balance it on my finger. And basically what we're after here is figuring out, okay, we know that adding hardware to the shell changes the pitch of the wood when you hit it on the side with your fist. We can safely say that adding the weight of hoops to it is going to have some kind of effect. Um, but the big curiosity here is if you know the pitch of your shell and you start putting heads on it and tensioning them up, what is actually happening to the shell when you put all that tension on there? Because you're looking at pressure against the bearing edge both straight up and down and also a little bit from the side because the pressure kind of shears as it goes over. What we've done so far uh, is just put these on. They're basically slack, like they're finger tight, so we won't hear the rattle from the insets on the lugs anymore, which is sort of noisy. And we're going to figure out what goes on with no pressure but the hoops on there. And then we're going to do a little bit of experimentation to see what happens when we start tensioning up and putting some pressure on here before we actually put real heads on the drum. So demonstration number one is just going to be hoops, no tension, just finger tight so that we don't hear any extra rattles. So kind of surprising to us, uh, based on everything we did in the last video, the more mass we added in terms of lugs and screws and everything, the lower the pitch went. And then for some reason, adding the hoops and these heads on raised the pitch back up, which uh, is a little befuddling, but there you go. What we do know is that there's a minimal amount of pressure being applied to the shell by these heads just at finger tight to make the screws not rattle. So now what we want to find out is, what happens when we add tension because if you have a drum and it has a note and then putting tension on the heads and applying pressure to the bearing edges changes the note of the shell then it seems like it's kind of impossible to actually tune a drum to the note of the shell because every time you change one of the heads or the other the note of the shell is changing so what we're going to do is we're going to bump up one of the heads rather than like aiming for a pitch i'm just going to pitch it up tight um, since it's a mesh head. And we're gonna see what that does, and then we're gonna go ahead and bump up the other one. So with one head pitched up, it's actually really difficult to get a consistent sound from hitting the side of the shell. Everywhere I hit it made a slightly different pitch, and some of them were pretty far off from each other. And what that's leading us to believe is that when you compress one side of the shell via tension from the head, you're starting to throw the ability of that shell to resonate as a unit out of whack. And it's really interesting to think of, you know, whether you're thinking about concert toms or you're thinking about um, just kind of any tuning scenario that as soon as you start applying pressure, you are fundamentally changing the way that the wood moves. 
It's worth also mentioning that the density of the wood in a piece of wood is inconsistent. So it's entirely possible too that there could be places in your drum that are behaving differently than other areas of that same drum. So without worrying too much about the pitch or pitches that were coming out of the shell when we had one side tuned up, now we're gonna bump up the other head to the exact same pitch and see if they meet in the middle and we get back to a single note coming out of the drum. So with both heads pitched up, now we're back to a fairly clear pitch. By tensioning up both of the heads, we've effectively raised the pitch of the shell a little over a half step. And just because I was curious, I went ahead and tuned both of the heads up a fair bit higher than that to see if the fundamental of the shell changed. And it changed a little bit, but uh, not much. But it's worth noting that mesh heads are also going to stretch more at a given tension than mylar heads. So it's not really like a linear thing uh, with these, or at least not as linear as it would be with a regular head. So basically where we're at now is we have kind of a range of what the shell is gonna do with hoops on it, both with no tension on the heads and then with tension on both heads. So now we're gonna switch to traditional heads, uh, G2 on the top clear and a clear G1 on the bottom, and just kind of fish around in that range of those two pitches we found and see what we find when we get there. All right, so here we are. We have tuned the heads on this drum to the shell pitch from when there was no tension on the mesh heads. So what we're trying to get into is just the range that we had where we had the hoops on. So this is tuned to basically a slightly flat C, and we're gonna see what it sounds like, and then we're going to bump it up to the slightly flat C sharp that existed when we had both of the mesh heads tuned very tight. as in the last video about this, that the note that the drum is making is not the same as the note that the heads are tuned to. In this case, it's an E flat below, kind of a flat E flat. Now we're gonna tune this up to a slightly flat C sharp, which is what we had from the shell when we had the mesh heads on tuned pretty high. Okay, so both of these tunings to my ear for a 12 in modern music is pretty high. And I, I know that there is a pitch in a shell and I know that it gets affected by everything that you put on it, including the mounting hardware, which you'll notice we're not using right now because that's another variable. Gravity, when you put it on a snare stand, is another variable. Um, it just, it goes on and on. Um, but one thing that I think might be worth experimenting with is instead of tuning the heads to this pitch that we think of as the shell pitch, I think we should hunt around and figure out what pitch the heads need to be in order to generate a fundamental from the drum that is the pitch of the shell. Now, a minute ago when we had the heads tuned to around a C, the fundamental was around an E flat below. And when we bumped it up a half step to C sharpish, that went up to E sharpish or E, <laughs> e natural. And uh, so we got to figure out how to get a C sharp when we hit the drum. Also definitely worth mentioning is that we did all that stuff earlier with mesh heads and it's virtually guaranteed that the pressure being applied by plastic uh, onto the bearing edges is different. It's I'm sure that it's stepwise different and uh, tuned up this high you know, these are these are meant to be much tougher and more resilient than the mesh is because you're really, you know, beating on them like that. So uh, there's a lot of variables going on here. But what we're trying to figure out is if there's a component to the drum, specifically the note that the wood of the shell is, that comes into play in some way for getting a good sound out of it. So tuning the heads in accordance with making the fundamental of the drum what we believe the shell to be in that sort of C to C sharp range depending on the head tension uh, sounds pretty good. Uh, however, since we can't check what the pitch of the shell is under all this tension, it's safe to say it's probably not a C or a C sharp because there's a lot of tension from the, from the traditional heads on there, um, which basically takes us to, I guess, what our sort of like 
fundamental point of this is, which is that tune your drums so they sound good and don't sweat this stuff too much. It's entirely possible that there's something fundamental about this that is legit and worth taking into consideration to some degree. But as far as we can tell, tuning based on what your ear wants and what the music is asking for makes a whole lot more sense than stressing out about uh, the physical metrics of the instruments. Right down to whether like your 12 inch tom is eight inches deep or nine inches deep, it really doesn't matter that much. What really matters is can you make it sound how you want or not? And that's basically it. So at the end of the day, experiment, 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 try to keep track of what worked and what didn't. And, you know, go easy on yourself about all the things that we think we're supposed to know or what you feel like you're deficient at, whether it's a sound thing or sciencey stuff like this. It really doesn't matter that much. It just matters that you play well and that you sound good. And that's it. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on this uh, <laughs> experimentation journey. Um, I hope you learned a little bit. I definitely did. Um, thanks again to Promark by Dodero for being our presenting sponsor. And uh, let us know if this whole thing of shell pitches has actually meant anything to you in your playing life. Um, because it's definitely sort of still new to me. It hasn't been a thing that's been a part of my uh, career in any way. Um, but it's certainly fascinating and anything that involves the physics of the sound that we make and the instrument that we play is definitely interesting to me. So uh, yeah, let us know and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.